Well, it is a very powerful documentary um, that takes you right to the heart of those terrible years. And as I say, Wad Al-Khatib, I'm pleased to say, is joining us in the studio. Very timely having you here, Wad. Thank you for um, having me. It's good to have you here. When you, when you watch uh, what's happening in Syria now and when you heard the news about your city being taken by this rebel force, what went through your mind? Um, it was something, I think, um, for years, and it's been eight years since we were displaced out of Aleppo, exactly like this month in December. Um, we, to be honest, like I, when I said goodbye to everything, like I would never even imagine in my lifetime that something I, w I will be back. Um, watching these images coming out from there, watching people like me, activists, and coming back to their homes, to their families after years of being um, like just apart. It was just something so emotional. Um, we, there's hope. There was no hope for years now. Assad was recontrolling Syria. So many governments, including the EU and uh, specifically Italy, who opened the new embassy for uh, Damascus in, in, um, in Italy. Everyone is just pushing us to deal with Assad as a fact. The one and the regime who killed us for years, who displaced us for years, who used chemical weapons on us. And now, like, no, it's, it's been retaken by the rebels, which is where it should be. And one of those sort of very moving scenes in your, in your film is, is you saying goodbye to your house very tearfully. Um, do you look forward to... I mean, you have been back since, obviously, but going back to it as a free city. I mean, and, and Syria has had so many full storms, hasn't it? We don't know much about this group and how much it has changed. Is it naive to expect this group can usher in freedom or, or, or is it going to just lead to more civil war? I think? think whatever this group was, it won't be as bad as Assad was. For years, 13 years, we've been trying to call for the international community, for um, our own people, for everyone, just to, like, there's no way, you know, people can take this as, like, it's fine and we are okay in our life where there's over, like, 6 million Syrian refugees out of Syria. There's another six who are living in camps today. People are living like in a very kind of, in northwest of Syria, very intensive area with civilians who've been displaced for many years, who until today still under Russia and Iranian attacks. Um, like how this could be, you know, like, okay. So whatever this groups is today um, is, is like, we know about them because also what we can see today on the ground is something very surprising for all of us. As activists, you know, who believe in democracy and freedom, yes, we don't agree with their, their kind of agenda and what they think about, but we are, what we are seeing today on the ground, ground is something very different. And, you know, if we would just have this opportunity, we have to take this opportunity, we have to take our role as Syrian civil society, which it is happening today in Aleppo. Um, today in Hama, you know, one of the biggest prisons in the area where there was over 3,000 uh, prisoners who were released. One of them is one Lebanese guy. He was detained for 40 years. He was detained when he was 16 be because of the, you know, like the... By Assad's fault? Yeah, yes. By Hafez al-Assad. By Hafez al-Assad. And today we're looking at these people who are just cut off the whole world and everyone was just okay, you know, moving forward in their life as if it's okay. And it's not, no. And, you know, this group has stunned everybody by coming out of, out of the, sort of the shadows and, and having this, this whirlwind advance. Yep. Um, and you wonder how the rest of the region is going to respond uh, to it. What, what do you think the West should do? It's an Al-Qaeda sort of inspired group, originally at least, as you say, it's kind of transformed itself. What should the UK do now, do you think? I mean, definitely we need first no-fly zone to, to protect all the civilians who lived in north now of Syria. Now we're almost talking about Hama, which is middle of Syria. All these people, I think, you know, whatever you're uh, thinking about this group or different group or whatever, everyone agrees that the most dangerous things now is the attacks that Assad, supported by Russia and Iran, could still have on civilians. In these couple of days, you know, like Assad were attacking the um, university hospital, uh, another hospital in Aleppo, three hospitals in Idlib, and we are watching these, you know, like massive massacres happening there. Civilians should be protected, whether it was controlled by Al-Qaeda or by whoever they think they are. On the other hand, we need all the support for serious of our society to be able to lead this area. All the statements that we're seeing from these groups are, again, you know, very surprising. We have a history with trust issue between us as activists and them, and yet they are acting in an amazing way. 
you know, comparing to what we've learned about them before. But you'll remember that Hamar was the sort of the, the moment of great hope, wasn't it, in 2011? The, the uprising that began in the south just yes. sort of it caught fire. Tens of thousands of people protesting there and demonstrating, and then Assad just crushed it brutally. Is this the first time that you're allowing yourself to kind of hope that the Assad era could be coming to an end? I mean, definitely, yes. You know, the first two days, when even when my own city, Aleppo, was retaken, and I've got footage from, like, people I know there, from my own house there, and I wasn't able to feel, like, any hope because I was so scared. I was so scared with what's coming next. Today, like, it's been, like, six days tomorrow, and with everything is, is going on, you can't not be hopeful, you know? Like, it is the only hope we can get. Because the international com community let us down, because they've been abandoned us for years, even when the earthquake hit northwest of Syria, everything was just going to kind of normalize with Assad, as if he's like, you know, the fact that we should accept all. Today, there's a new path, and we have to take every opportunity and just try to focus on how can we make things better. Last one thing I want to just to say, this rebel group, which you are talking about, there is part of them, which is, which is uh, THS, but there's so many other people who are like me, activists who are there, people who live in this area, there's families, there are people just, they've been displaced out of their uh, homes and they live in camps for years, they have the right to return, and that's the only way for them to, to go back. Wad al Khatib, thank you so much. So good to have you on the show, particularly on a, on a day like this. And of course, you've gone from activist to exile from your country and now filmmaker, and you're making one documentary after another. So good luck with those. Thank you so much. So good to thank have you. you on the show. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so thank much. You.